Good evening. Great to see everybody here. Hopefully we start getting some people popping on and watching us um, for our little uh, service, little talk today that I'm going to have with you. Um, obviously, we are in some, some trying times, some troubling times. And um, so it's tough when we're not, we don't get to get together as a family and, um, you know, as a church family come together, worship the King of Kings, lift his name up, his name that is above every name and, uh, and get to break bread together and share the word. And so anyway, I just want to, I would just want to come to you tonight and share a little bit of uh, word of, of encouragement and hopefully we strengthen our faith and, um, <clears throat> we don't get caught up in all of this pandemic that we're getting, you know, everywhere we turn, we turn on the TV. It's all about the Corona this, Corona that, the COVID-19, COVID this and that. And, and you see people more, more paralyzed uh, with a pandemic of fear. And they're so afraid and they're so, you know, don't touch this, don't touch that, you know. And, you know, with my my work besides pastoring the church I have another job go into people's houses and they gave us these gloves you know and everywhere you go you see people wearing these gloves you know I look like a doctor or something uh, anyway you go in there and you put these gloves on and you're, you're cautious not to make people nervous and all of those things <clears throat> and I was in a house the other day and this lady says, I haven't left the house in 14 days. And so please don't touch anything. Try not to cough. And, you know, she was just, you know, here I'm trying to do an inspection. She's like, don't touch anything. And uh, so anyway, you know, you know, you see people everywhere putting masks on. And granted, I understand all of that. I understand that they want to be safe. They want to be cautious. Um, but my question is, in all of those things, and maybe in some areas that's wisdom. Maybe you should be doing that. But at the same time, are we being motivated and controlled by fear? Or are we walking by faith? You know, you look in the Bible days, and Jesus wasn't supposed to talk to the, the Samaritan woman. So she goes over out of his way to the well, and she, he talks to the Samaritan woman. Jesus wasn't supposed to touch the lepers. So he speaks to the lepers, he touches the lepers, he heals the lepers. He walked by faith. And so our faith needs to trump our fear. You know, I understand the concern, I understand all of those things, but at the same time, <clears throat> we are to walk by faith and not by sight. We're to walk by his word and grow in his word. And it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by his word. Romans 10, 17, as that word comes alive in us, we begin not to lose sleep, not to be nervous, not to be fretting, not to be anxious, not to, not to be all consumed with that. My question is, are we hearing more of CNN and Fox News and, and MSNBC and all this, you know, has that become our trinity? Is that, is that our, 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 where all our information is coming from? Or are we spending time with the King of Kings? Are we spending time with the Lord of Lords, the one who rules and reigns, and he is he, he rules and reigns over every sickness and disease, over every virus, over every pestilence, over, over every assignment and attack of the enemy. He is the king, and he is the Lord, and he rules and reigns, and he's Jehovah Rapha. He still heals. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's moving on our behalf. You know, people think this is a dark hour. The darker it gets, the brighter the church is, the, the brighter our light is going to be. And so I encourage the church to come out of the closet. I encourage the church to be who you're called to be. Walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. And I like to say, just live by faith. Four times in the Bible it says the just shall live by faith. We live and breathe by faith. In him I live and move and have my being. I'm, I'm consumed in Christ. I'm in him. He lives in me and I live in him. I'm one with him. I walk as his light in the earth. 
And so his word encourages me. His word allows me to say, no weapon formed against me can prosper. No weapon formed against my children can prosper. No weapon formed against my marriage can prosper. No sickness, no disease, no division, no, no anything can keep me from the love of God. Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. He's made me more than a conqueror. So I've conquered in Christ. I was crucified with him and I was also resurrected with him. In this Easter season, I pray we can come together and celebrate his resurrection on Easter morning. We pray that, that our president, whom we should be praying for every day, and all of our leaders, and pray that God gives our governors and our president and our people in the White House and those that God has put in those places, that we should pray for them and we should gird them up and we should pray for wisdom above all else, that God would give them wisdom and God would protect them and God would... God would not allow any plague to come near their dwelling. That, that God would not allow any pestilence to come, you know, knocking at their door at noonday. But we pray for the protection and the wisdom of our president and his family. And we know that God's going to have his way in this nation. And great revival is going to break out. That great things happen when, whether it's forced or unforced, whether you discipline yourself and you and you set aside time and say, this is my time with God. This is my time when I need to get alone with Him. I, I, set a, a, I make an altar in my home. I make a place where I can dwell with Him and worship Him and glorify Him. That it's not time for the church just to go into hiding because the church isn't a building. The church is you and me. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is, is, is an army. The church is... is is what he died for and he's the one we live for and so we need to come out and be all he's called us to be let this word bring hope and life let us bring revival and we pray that great things will happen out of this how many know that the word says that he turns around everything for our good he makes it all turn around for our good because we love him and we're called according to his purpose he makes it all turn around. Sometimes it takes a common enemy to bring unity. Sometimes it takes a common enemy to bring unity. And it's in unity that he commands his blessing. And he pours out his spirit. And he brings revival. And his spirit begins to move. And great things begin to happen as he commands his blessing in unity. I'm telling you, here at the gathering place, and those listening to me right now, He's up to something. He's up to something great. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to excite you. We should pray for those over us. We should pray for those who have been affected and infected by the COVID-19 and all of this stuff that we hear, the coronavirus and all of that. And I was reading something on Facebook today. It's interesting. He said uh, something about if, uh, if this virus can do all of this to the world, what can a, a mustard seed of faith do? What could a mustard seed of faith do? If you and I arise in faith, faith is a mustard seed. That's all we need. And we can speak to a mountain and we command it to, to jump into the sea because we have authority in the earth. Are we supposed to cower in fear? Are we supposed to hide behind the rocks and say, what was me and what is going on and how, when is this going to pass? Or are we going to be like David showing up and saying, where's that giant? Where is that giant? I don't know what y'all are doing, but where is that giant? That giant's got to come down. That giant has to, that giant's about to lose his head. What, what, what do I get when I bring the giant down? I'm telling you, this is the finest hour. This is our finest hour. The church is going to arise. Revival is going to break out. Pockets of revival are going to break out all over the world with people who begin to arise with a reformation spirit, with a spirit of reformation, with a spirit of revival, and says, hey, 
I'm, I'm called to greater than this. He's, I'm destined for greater than this. I'm anointed for greater than this. He saved me, he anointed me for something greater than this. He empowered me. He gave me Psalms 91. He gave me his word. He gave me his spirit. He gave me his name. He gave me the keys of the kingdom. All you got is a virus. He gave me healing power, anointing that breaks the yoke. He gave me the word. He said his word and he healed them. He spoke the word and he healed them. The centurion said, Jesus, just speak the word. You don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. We can speak the word right here and now. And in Africa, in Korea, in China, in Guatemala, in Haiti, we can speak the word right here in Defiance, Ohio, in the U.S. of A. And decree the word. Healing will come to you right now. If you put faith in it, we release the word of God to bring healing to you and your family, your sickness, your virus, your flu symptoms, your whatever it is. Jesus wants to heal you and set you free. His word is true. We cancel every assignment of the enemy against you and your family. We cancel every assignment. We break every yoke in the name of Jesus. We know that his word is true. We know that his word is true. And I know you're all about following all the rules and that's all fine and good and keep your six feet away and all the social distancing and all that wonderful stuff that we hear everybody say. And isn't it great? And we gotta respect those that need that. Respect those that don't want you to hug them right now. I know you huggers out there, you're listening to me. You, you wanna hug them, but you can't hug them right now. So just hold on. It'll come right around the corner. You're going to be able to hug them all you want. And so just give them their space. Pray for them. There's no distance in prayer. Give them their social distancing. So just pray for them where you're at. And watch the power of God touch them. Watch faith arise. Watch the spirit of fear leave them. It says he didn't give us a spirit of fear. But of power. Of love. And a sound mind. Power. Power over fear, power over every sickness and disease, power over every demon and every every spirit of infirmity, power over every attack of the enemy, and a sound mind. How many people out there are you running into that have a sound mind? Fear will paralyze you. Fear will cripple cripple you. It'll 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 allow you to to uh, not be able to. To function, not think clearly, it'll it'll bring confusion to you. It'll cripple your thought process. The victory begins here, and this word has to begin to change your mind so you start changing your actions and changing the way you change your perspective and change your viewpoint. You gotta let that word transform the way you think. So he gave you power, he gave you a sound mind, and he gave you love love that casts out fear that's what the word says the the perfect love casts out fear let me ask you this who who is perfect love who is love god is love god is love and his perfect love will cast out every fear let me ask you how close are you walking to him how close are you getting to him do you understand how much he loves you so much that he gave his prized possession. He gave you his only begotten son to die for you. He loves you with an unconditional agape love. You can't wrap your brain around it. You don't understand the peace he gives. You don't understand the love that he's wrapped us with. He, he is amazing. It's his love shed abroad in our hearts that allows us to live an overcoming life, that allows us to live in power and and a sound mind and allows us to walk in agape love with those around us. Amen? You love them if somebody's in faith. You love them if they're in fear. You love them if they're well. You love them if they're, if they're sick. You love them if they're poor. You love them if they're rich. You love everybody. You love your enemies and you pray for those who persecute you. 
It's easy to love those that love you. But he puts a love in us that loves our enemies. Those that are speaking harshly and maybe wrongly against you. You love them, you pray for them. That, that's all. It's a supernatural love. It's, it's, it's an impartation that he gives you when he comes to abide and dwell. And you begin to abide in the vine. That love begins to take over. And you begin to walk with that same kind of love. And it's amazing. Let me... Let me just share a couple couple stories. I don't want to talk too long. Um, but uh, those of the congregation, you know, I like to I like to preach and y'all pull it out of me. But and I love it. And I love to hear the amens. I can't hear the amens on here. But anyway, I, I encourage you, if you're watching, write amen underneath there. Write, 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 right under there. Preach it, Pastor Steve. Right under there. Where you're listening from. Maybe you're in another country. Right. Write the name of that country. Write the name of your city that you're listening to. Maybe you're in Miami. Maybe you're in California. Maybe you're maybe you're in New Orleans. I don't know where you are. Maybe you're in Alaska right now. Write the name of your of your city, your state that you're watching from. And share this. Hit share. And share this with people. People need a word of encouragement. People need to be, you know, sometimes sometimes just shaking out of that fear and say, hey, Pastor Steve's praying for me. The people at the gathering place, there's a bunch of crazy intercessors up in there. They're praying for me. Amen? Message us and, and send us a message and we, that, that we can pray for you. Maybe you have somebody in your family that has the COVID-19. We're going to pray over that. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna believe God we're going to shake the heavens and we're going to come against that thing in authority and we're going to speak that thing to, to be null and void and cast it out of your loved one. Maybe it's your spouse, your child, your grandma, your grandpa. We're going to believe God together that he's going to set you free. Let me ask you this. Sometimes, have you ever, have you ever been in a season where you felt like you were rejected? you were isolated and you lost your support and there was nobody around you that you felt really had your back and nobody was praying for you you thought they were they weren't but you know people are but you know how the enemy plays but think about this sometimes you're rejected by the wrong people so God can get you with the right people Sometimes a lot of a lot of stuff happens we don't understand and you don't have to always understand it all. You can ask God for wisdom and he, He'll lead you and he'll, His Spirit will lead you and guide you. He'll give you wisdom, He'll give you peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He lives and dwells inside of you if you're a believer. Okay? But think about this. How many times in the Bible did God separate somebody? because he was doing something powerful in them. He separated them. Remember, if you, if you study the life of Paul, he was kind of out of the picture for three years. Like, where'd Paul go? What's up with Paul? Paul's gone for three years because sometimes God separates us. Remember David. Remember David, the giant killer I was just referring to? Remember he killed the lion and the bear and the giant? You know, you know that, David? Remember, he wasn't even invited when Samuel shows up at Jesse's house, his father's house, trying to anoint the king. And David, his dad, his own father, didn't even invite him to the party. Here we are, lining up the brothers. David's out there taking care of the sheep. He was faithful. I bet he wasn't throwing a pity party. I bet he wasn't all upset. I just believe that he trusted God with all of it. Why? Because if you look at his life, he he had a, he had an intimacy with the Father. He had a relationship with God. He understood who God was. He he was a worshiper. And that's why he was a, a mighty warrior. Because he knew who his God was. So he was separated in a sense. A lot of us have been separated from our co-workers. We're not going to the factory. We're not going to school right now. We're not going to the university. We're not going to our job. You've been quarantined. You've been separated. You 
you might you might be happy about it. You might be upset about it. You might miss, you know, think, you know, knowing that you're gonna have that paycheck and that steady pay. You might be the enemy might come in and get you worried and frustrated. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you that God, God is up to something. But you gotta you gotta do your part. You have to do your part. What are you gonna do in this time when? I'm not saying God separated us, but I know, shoot, I'm still working. I'm still out there. I'm running less appointments and those kind of things, you know, but at the same time, he's separating a lot of us. So we're alone. Guess what? You might have to get to know your wife again. You might have to get to know your kids again. You might have to learn how to deal with your husband again out there, you know, and it's a, you know, imagine if God begins to restore the family unit, like we all become the Clavers. We all become one big happy family like we're on Walton's Mountain again, like we're a little house in the prairie. What if he begins to restore faith in our, in our home? What if he begins to knit our hearts together as a family unit? How about the parents have more influence over your children as their friends do, as their peers do. How about you begin to be the main voice in your daughter's life, in your son's life, maybe who's about to go through puberty and they need a dad. They need somebody who's been through it that can relate and can walk them through that and teach them how to walk by faith. Teach them how to walk not controlled by fear, not paralyzed, and crippled by everything that they're hearing around them, not listening to what their peers say and all caught up in this and caught up in that. You know, I mean, let's face it. We need the family unit to be restored. We need you to put God first, your wife, your husband second, and your children third. That's the priority of the kingdom in, in, in the family. Can I get an amen out there? God first, your spouse, your children. How about there be order put in your house again? How about you get your children to spend as much time with God as they are on YouTube, as they are on TikTok? How about that? By the way, we've been making some good TikToks. You should watch us. Anyway, we've been home. We've been having some good time, good times. And we've been putting together some TikToks. And it's been a lot of fun. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know TikTok was so big, but here we are. We're, we're, we're having fun with it, and it's just a family thing that we do. You might not be as crazy as us, but you might, you might break out the Monopoly game. You might do some stuff as a family, and then you might, you know, open your Bible and pray with your kids before they go to bed. Take advantage of this time. They might, this, this virus could be gone in a flash, in a snap of the finger. God gives because there's a lot of people praying. You might have to go to work on next Monday. You might have to go you might have to go to work a week from Monday. You don't know when this thing is just going to be cut off when God says enough is enough. I've heard my I've heard my bride praying, crying out for me and I I'm I'm done with this and he just shows up on the scene and it's done. Take advantage of that time with your family. I'm sitting here in my house having a good time this evening. Loving on my kids, loving on my wife, you know, chilling here at the house, having a good time, hopefully encouraging you. You know, think about through the word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this right here, okay? Um, I'm going to end with this right here. Um, think about this in the Bible. By the way, this is my, my iPad here, looking at some stuff here and seeing some of y'all on here. That's awesome. But anyway, think about the upper room. Remember when Jesus died, rose again, and he says, hey, listen, um, I need you. Go to that upper room. Don't leave that room until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You pray until he shows up. And so they were shut away. Maybe they had somebody going out and getting their groceries. Maybe they had, maybe they had somebody going and, and 
and bringing up the, the drinks and the food and, and the paper plates and everything that they needed. Maybe they would go and get the, the pita bread and everything. Maybe, you, you never know. But think about this. They waited and they prayed. I believe they were probably fasting. And they were getting after it. And they were worshiping. And they were, they were getting intense about it. And they knew this was serious business. This was life and death. This was their future. This was their destiny, you know. And so they're praying. And they prayed. It wasn't 10 minutes. It wasn't 10 hours. 10 days. They're up there. They're praying. And next thing you know, a rushing mighty wind. But I say all of that to say, sometimes he separates you. And I know right now, it's just your family. And think about this. Also, people who went up into a big room that smelled a little different, that was a little different. Think about this. And it was only their family. Noah went up into the ark with his wife, his Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their three wives. And it's just them and all those stinky animals. Big and small, two of every kind, all of that. And here they come. Here they come. And, uh, and they spent all of that time, rain, 40 days, 40 nights. And we know that, that God brought great things out of, out of that upper room. We know that God restarted everything with Noah and his family because he was the only one that he found righteous in the earth. You know, if you, if you only save your family, you've done something. And he saved his family, and they're up in that, up in that ark. And they came out, and because of his righteousness and his faith in God, because it's our, it's our belief, it's our faith in God that, that makes us righteous. It's not anything we do. Our righteousness as, is as a filthy rags. Okay, we all know that, right? Okay? So anyway, in that time, you know that God was talking to him. You know that God was meeting with them as they're taking care of the animals and they're going through their stuff daily in that confined space. Granted, bigger than most, most of our houses, you know, having all those animals up in there. But think about this. It's just, they were quarantined for all that time. And then they were able to come out. I won't get on into all the details of the story, but they were able to come out. And because of them, we're all here today. You know, God was sick and tired. He wiped, he wiped everybody out. But him, I'm telling you, God wants to do a new thing in you and your family. God wants to do a new thing and pour out his spirit in a new way in your family, in your marriage. He wants to revive that relationship in your marriage. He wants to restore intimacy in your marriage. He wants to restore intimacy, first of all, in his relationship with you and him. You and him walk around your property. You're, you're still allowed to go outside. Walk around your property and pray. Walk around out there. Take your children. Walk around outside. Teach them how to pray. Get close. Have those family game nights. Have those times where you're bonding together. People that are okay to get together with, get together with them. I know you're supposed to, what is it, 10 or less? I don't know all the rules. But anyway... Um, do what you feel led to do. Amen. Be wise. If you're older and you're more cautious, all of the, I understand all of that, but I pray you stay in the word. You stir your faith. Get close to God. Pull your family close. I pray Noah anointing to come upon you. That you'd pull your family close. You'd love on them and you'd make them feel protected. And that you would start a brand new, a brand new life, a brand new journey, walking hand in hand, one with each other and one with God. I encourage you with that today. And if you want to spend some time in the Word, I'm closing right here. Read Psalm 91 with your kids. Read it with your wife. The other night I read it and before I prayed over my wife and we went to sleep. Psalm 91. And so you you wanna you want to uh, you wanna stay in that word and let it come alive to you. And I just encourage you, don't let 
Don't let fear control you. Let faith take over. Sometimes fear comes and knocking. Let faith answer the door. Glory to God. And so, so I encourage you. I just want to pray with you and I'm going to let you go. You know, we don't have church in the morning. So you can rewatch this. You can flip this on. Rewatch. Maybe we'll share it. And you can get in there. We'll just, we'll just flip it on. You can watch it again tomorrow. And hopefully be just doubly blessed. Maybe you got 10 or 15 people you want to share it with. Tag them. Send it to them. And they'll be encouraged by this word as well. Pull your family close. Pray over them. Bless them. Walk in faith. And let's pray right now. We'll pray for our leaders. Pray for our families. Pray against the spirit of fear that's been released in a pestilence pandemic form. And, uh, you know, I want to be I want to be diagnosed with faith, not with fear. I want to be diagnosed with divine health, not with the COVID-19 virus. And so let, let's pray. I'm believing the same for you. It's an awesome night and God is good. He's still on the throne. He still reigns. No virus reigns. No enemy reigns. There's no other small G God that can take his place. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's pray. Agree with me right now. In Jesus' name, we lift up our president right now. We lift up those that are making decisions. We pray for the president, President Trump and his family. We speak blessing, divine health, protection, and we speak wisdom into them as leaders and all those around him that are speaking into his, into his ear. We pray for wisdom in that White House. We pray for our governors. We pray for our leaders and those politicians that are making crucial decisions on our behalf. We pray, God, for doctors and nurses that are on the front lines dealing with these things. And we pray, God, you'd protect them. People that are working in the hospitals and cleaning them and working on the, at the front desk and all of those, those people, God, we speak protection and blessing and divine health over them. We pray your angels will be released to watch over them, the four corners of those hospitals in Jesus' name. And we say that those people will come in and even be supernaturally healed in Jesus' name. Dear God, we pray that they would get the, the cure for it quickly, the vaccine for it quickly in Jesus' name. And all of those, all of this would be eradicated and, and be a past memory, just like everything else in the past with all these viruses and flus and, and pandemic, all the things from, from yesteryear that we don't even think about anymore. We all the swine flu and all that nonsense. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name for those people that have. COVID-19 and the loved ones that we that we may be in contact that have it and we speak healing to their body right now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet we speak healing in Jesus name we plead the blood of Jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet we say by the anointing that is upon us that every yoke is broken in Jesus' name, there's no distance in prayer. You're watching us right now in Haiti. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Africa, be healed in Jesus' name. In Korea and China, be healed in Jesus' name. All over in Japan and in Indonesia, in, all over the globe in Jesus. In Sri Lanka, be healed in the name of Jesus. In India, be healed and touched by the power of God right now in Jesus' name. We say that Jehovah Rapha rules and he reigns. And we speak healing and we pray for revival in our churches and those, those uh, churches around here as well as around the globe. We pray that great faith would be stirred and great encouragement would arise in Jesus' name. Reform your church, God. Have your way in your bride. Revive us, O oh Lord, and have your way in us. Let us be all that you've called us to be. And let us walk by faith. For we know it's impossible to please you without faith. For you're a rewarder of those who, who seek you and who diligently go after you. And we give you praise. Reward us, God, as we go after you and we seek you in faith. Draw our families closer together. Let us be one with you and begin to be intimate and one with each other. Have your way in us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all have a great night. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Share this with, with as many as you can. God bless.